Yo! Here's another part of our continuing series we're calling Media Minutes, where we feature a news pro that shares a bit on what they do every day and how they interact with public safety in the field. The intended audiences are public safety information officers, otherwise known as the PIO. Hey ho, disaster fans, I'm Kevin Sir, otherwise known as at Rustavik. This week, we're teaching the basic PIO course here in DuPage County in Illinois. I'm sitting next to Chris. What's up, Chris? How are you doing? Good, man. Hey, I'm so glad to have you here and as part of our media panel. Can you tell our viewers out in uh, wherever they are a little bit about what you do? Well, I'm an investigative reporter, a consumer reporter, and a general assignment reporter, kind of all rolled into one, a hybrid. Um, I work for NBC5, NBC Chicago. Um, I get a little bit more flexibility to find and dig up stories, but if there's ever breaking news, disasters, emergencies, I'm out the door doing the story. Dude, that sounds serious. Uh, there's a lot of uh, engagement with our communities and public safety, and you probably deal with every single one of them here, which is great. I'm, I'm glad you do that. Uh, is this something that you were born to do? I mean, you're a reporter by heart, by trade, and you love this stuff. Is this something that you were born to do? Well, I love this job. Uh, I wasn't born to do it, to be honest, because I actually wanted to be a doctor when I was in college. And then I realized when that wasn't going to work out, uh, TV news was really drawing me in. And that's what I've been doing ever since I graduated college. Dig it. Um, we have a lot of PIOs uh, from all over the country that kind of take in these videos and kind of learn a little bit about uh, what PIOs do and how they interact with the media. So I want to know from you, since you interact with a lot of public safety PIOs, what's one trait that you like about a PIO? responsiveness. The sooner that you get back to me, the sooner you respond to my text, call, or email, uh, the better it's going to be for everyone. Mm. So in that same vein, if responsiveness is what you like about a PIO, what's one thing that you do not like about a PIO? Um, if they try to tell me if it is or isn't a story, this isn't really a story, Chris. Why are you doing this? That immediately sends up a red flag. That doesn't oh. happen a lot but that has happened. So does that make you dig a little deeper? Does that, you know, the, the rabbit ears go up at that point? You're like, man, I, they're, they're hiding something? Is that the instantaneous thought? Exactly, anytime someone tries to do the Jedi mind trick, like, this is not <laughs> what you're looking for, that immediately <laughs> sends up uh, a notion that I need to start digging a little deeper to see if there really is something going on. Man, your powers are strong, young Jedi. <laughs> I can't use the Jedi mind trick on you. That's no good. So in, in all this, being a PIO is difficult and working in the news media is incredibly difficult. What are some challenges that you see for us as PIOs to work with the media? Are, 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 is this going to be all on social media? Should we improve our skills on writing press releases? Like, What's one thing that a PIO could do to maybe improve relationships with local media? Uh, reach out, develop the relationships. If you hear that there's a new reporter at the newspaper or the TV station, say, hey, could you send me to this guy's desk? Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, you, you mentioned we are tasked with doing so much with uh, so fewer resources these days. It's not just press releases anymore, it's social media. You have to be on the top of your game with both. So um, getting the information out accurately and fast is a challenge that PIOs and reporters I have to deal with. That's pretty tough. Uh, not only are you on scene doing your actual job, you're probably also social mediaing as well, doing all that at one time. Right. It's not just the five o'clock news anymore. We are getting the information out to the public through Twitter or through Facebook. We're doing Facebook lives where we're on camera saying we're at the scene of the emergency. Uh, just looking at all sorts of ways to get that information out there with the hopes that our viewers will come back to the traditional news to traditional newspaper clippings and also um, we're doing uh, text uh, f text copy for our websites. So there's a lot that we're all doing these days. And so th the same phrase of for us as government folks is doing more with less. It sounds like you folks are probably embroiled in doing the same things as us, doing more with less. That's a lot to do. Um, to kind of close out the interview that we talk about a lot with our news media reporters is, is a game that we like to play and, and find a little bit more about you as a person. So it's kind of along the same lines of like, I don't know, maybe bagels or donuts. Are you a bagel or donut kind of guy? Donuts. Man, donuts. All the cops will love to hear that for <laughs> sure. All right. So first question, a fax or an email? Email for sure. Why email? Is it because it's there? It's there. It's right in front of you. You and your colleagues can see it if you if you uh, carbon copy a lot of different people. Faxes, most newsrooms I still think have fax machines, but we don't maybe check it as much as we would check our email. 
So definitely emails. All right. So email versus text. You know, that's that's a good one. If it's something that you as a PIO say, hey, I think Chris would be into this story. I think Chris needs to know this. Definitely a text. Uh, more pr traditional press releases. Obviously, email would be the best format for that. Okay. How about um, a tweet versus a text? A text. Um, especially if it's something that's a breaking news situation. On the other hand, if this is something that you are under the gun with as a PIO, you need to get all the information out fast and accurately. I think a tweet to the wider reporting audience would be more beneficial. I see. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one story or you want text. the exclusive, text, text is the way to go. text, because if you tweet, then more people will see it. Got it. How about tweet versus snap? Tweet. Absolutely. Not a Snapchat guy? Not, not a Snapchatter. Man, I neither am I. I'm, am I missing out? <laughs> Snapchat versus Instagram. What do you think? Uh, Instagram. I, I do Instagram from time to time. I dig it. I'm going to have to follow you on Instagram now. How about Instagram versus old school? Instagram versus Facebook? You know, Facebook. I, I still am in that the generation where the Facebook, you think about more frequently than the Instagram whenever you're on social media. Mm -hmm. I dig it. So, um... Some of the reporter questions that we have is more like audio versus video with no sound. Well, we'll, we'll take whatever. Uh, of course, audio is great if there's uh, compelling 911 audio. Uh, but we are a visual medium, and the visuals, uh, even if it doesn't have sound, if it's compelling video, we'll take. Got it. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Periscope versus Facebook Live versus YouTube Live versus Instagram Live. Which, which is your favorite live platform? Well, being that I've only done one of those, it would have to be Facebook Live. <laughs> Again, because I think more people are on the Facebook platform. Got it. So one of the questions that we also like to ask is gunshot wounds versus unicorns. Uh Gunshot wounds to lead the newscast, and then unicorns s several minutes later. So, so, so both ends of the spectrum. But you want to lead with the gunshot wounds, and then end with the. What about a unicorn with a gun? No, no, no. <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding. Um, how about uh, beer thirty or wine o'clock? Beer thirty. Oh, okay. How about emojis or memes? And I'm judging you right now. I want to see memes. Oh, memes are funny, and they get the point across. I think. Emojis are cool, but memes for me. I, I am more of a meme guy myself, so I totally understand that side. And to close out, the final question um, that we like to ask all of our reporters is, what is your favorite hashtag? Well, I don't tweet uh, funny type stuff all that much. I'm pretty much a nuts and bolts kind of reporter when I'm tweeting out the news. Chiberia was a big hashtag that that a lot of people were using. That's one of the few that I probably used whenever, whenever we had the, the polar vortex. Uh, I'm always on the hunt for new ones uh, if I will go that direction. But <laughs> Chiberia, how about that? That's a good one. All right. I dig it. I like dad jokes. That's another good one. So if you uh, I want to follow that, that's a pretty funny hashtag as well. So um, I want to thank you, Chris, uh, for uh, giving us a little time here to kind of talk to several of our PIOs across the country and trying to find out some more information to increase the relationships, not only on the government side, but in, in fact, probably from all the other agencies with our local media. Where can they follow you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Chris Coffee NBC Chicago, and that's C O F F E Y, or on Twitter at, at Chris Coffee NBC. Excellent. Glad to have you here. We're reporting live here from DuPage County, Office of Homeland Security, Emergency Management. We'll see you, folks.